Could you read from from the novel? It's in Dahl's voice, and he begins by addressing newly arrived prisoners from Paris who have actually come on a passenger train rather than a cattle car. And just as a word of explanation, the term KL refers to concentration's lager or concentration camp. Sure. I reached for the loud hailer and said, Greetings, one and all. Now, I'm not going to lead you up the garden path. You're here to recuperate, and then it's off to the farms with you, where there'll be honest work for honest board. We won't be asking too much of that little young'un, you there in the sailor suit, or of you, sir, in your fine astrakhan coat, each to his or her talents and abilities. Fair enough? Very well. First, we shall escort you to the sauna for a warm shower before you settle in your rooms. It's just a short drive through the birchwood. Leave your suitcases here, please. You can pick them up at the guest house. Tea and cheese sandwiches will be served immediately, and later there'll be piping hot stew. Onwards. As an added courtesy, I handed the horn to Captain Elts, who repeated the gist of my words in French. Then, quite naturally, it seemed, we fell into step, the fractious old lady, of course, remaining on the ramp to be dealt with by senior supervisor Gressa in the appropriate manner. And I was thinking, why isn't it always like this? And it would be if I had my way. A comfortable journey, followed by a friendly and dignified reception. What needed we, really, of the crashing doors of those boxcars, the blazing arc lights, the terrible yelling, out, get out, quick, faster, faster, the dogs, the truncheons, and the whips. And how civilized the KL looked in the thickening glow of dusk, and how richly the birches glistened. There was, it had to be said, the characteristic odor, and some of our newcomers were sniffing it with little upward jerks of their heads. But after a day of breezy, high-pressure weather, even that was nothing out of the here it came, that wretched, that accursed lorry, the size of a furniture van, yet decidedly uncouth, positively thuggish in aspect, its springs creaking and its exhaust pipe rowdily backfiring, barnacled in rust, the green top tarpaulin palpitating, the profile driver with the stub of a cigarette in his mouth and his tattooed arm dangling from the window of his cab. Violently it braked, skidded, jolting to a halt as it crossed the rails, its wheels whining for purchase. Now it slumped sickeningly to the left, and the neat side flap billowed skyward, and there, for two or three stark seconds, its cargo stood revealed. It was a sight no less familiar to me than spring rain or autumn leaves, nothing more than the day's natural wastage from KL1 on its way to KL2. But of course our Parisians let out a great whimpering howl. Zultz reflexively raised his forearms as though to fend it off, and even Captain Elts jerked his head round at me. The utter breakdown of the transport was but a breath away. Now you don't go far in the protective custody business if you can't think on your feet and show a bit of presence of mind. Many another commandant, I dare say, would have let the situation at once to generate it is something decidedly unpleasant. Paul Dole, however, happens to be of a rather different stamp. With one wordless motion, I gave the order. Not to my men-at-arms, no, to my musicians. The brief transitional interlude was very hard indeed, I admit, as the first strains of the violins could do no more than duplicate and reinforce that helpless, quavering cry. But then the mel melody took hold, the filthy truck with its flapping tarps lurched free of the crossing and bowled off down the crescent road, and was soon lost to sight. And on we strolled. It was just as I had instinctively sensed, our guests were utterly incapable of absorbing what they had seen. I later learned that they were the inmates of two luxurious institutions, a retirement home and an orphanage, both of which were underwritten by the most outrageous swindlers of them all, the Rothschilds. Our Parisians, what knew they of Ghetto, of Pogrom, of Razia? What knew they of the noble fury of the folk? We all of us walked on as if on tiptoe. Yes, we tiptoed through the birchwood, past trunks of hoary grey. 
the peeling birch bark, the little brown bower with its picket fence and potted geraniums and marigolds, the undressing room, the chamber. I turned on my heel with a flourish the instant Proofer gave his signal and I knew the doors were all screwed shut. Martin Amos reading from his novel The Zone of Interest. <laughs> 